Hey guys, and welcome back to the fifth video in my Python objects and classes tutorial series. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about class methods, static methods, and class variables. Now, these are very important and very useful, especially if you're coding large projects with multiple different classes. And they are fairly complex, but I'm going to try my best to explain them right now. So pretty much you can see here, I've already set up a class and I've already actually coded all the methods and class variables and all the stuff we're going to deal with. And I'm just going to go through and talk about it because it just saves a bit of time and makes things a bit easier. So first of all, let's talk about class variables. Now, to create a regular variable within a class, you can see that we have something like self.name equals name. And we've been over this. We know how this works. Now, when you create a class variable, Typically you do this at the top of the class and you just simply write like a variable, just not inside of one of your methods. So you can see up here, I have a list that says dogs equals, and then a list. If I wanted to have something like X, I could say like X equals five or X equals five. And I could put that at the top of my, uh, what do you call it? Class. And then to reference that you have to be inside of the class. So this sometimes is useful if you want to have variables, that every object in your class is going to need to use and you don't want to have to do like self dot x equals x within your initialization and it's just better practice to put variables that are going to be like statically uh, used inside of the class if that kind of makes sense so the way that you reference these variables is the same as you would reference uh, an attribute within your regular class so you can see here, like I do self.name equals name to create a new variable self.name. When I want to reference it later, I would have to type self.name, right? It's the same way to reference these class variables. So you can't, or I guess you could, but you wouldn't want to have um, the same name as this like in here. And if you did that, it would just overwrite this. Uh, so you'll, you'll see what I mean in just a second. But anyways, what I'm essentially doing here inside of my initialization is I'm appending every single dog object that we create into the list dogs. Now this list dogs begins to the class dog, not to the actual instance of dog. So Tim and Jim, if I reference dogs and I print that out will be the same value. It doesn't change dogs or like dogs is not specific to Tim and it's not specific to Jim. It's specific to the entire class uh, for every dog object. So it's the same for all that. And XC like five is gonna be the same for obviously Tim and Jim uh, and all other dog objects. I hope that kind of makes sense. We'll walk through it in just a second. Okay, so let's just first of all just print and figure out uh, like what's the point of this uh, class variable? Like what can we do with this? Well, first of all, the good thing about class variables is if you want to access them, you don't have to have an instance of the dog object to do so. So to see this, typically like if I wanted to call, so if I remove this class method, I remove the static method, you want to call method on a dog object, you'd have to do the name of the dogs so like Tim and then dot bark or Tim dot, uh, I don't know, whatever else that we have, like dot add, dot add weight, whatever you want to do, okay? But in this case, we can just actually call it on the name of the class. So if I do dog dot, and then you can see it's already coming up here, dot dogs like this, we should be able to print this to the screen. And you can see that we do end up being able to print this to the screen with a dog object and another dog object. So the main difference here with class variables is that you can call them with, you can still call, like I could still do tim.dogs, but it, I can also call them with the actual name of the class. And that's what makes it useful. So you don't have to have an instance uh, to call that, what do you call it, variable, if that makes sense. And I guess that's all I'm going to explain kind of for class variables because they're not that complicated. And if you play around with them, you should be able to figure that out, figure them out. Okay. So next we're going to talk about static and class methods. Now you can see here, I have at static method and at class method. These are known as decorators and you put these above your method, like directly above them like this. If you want to indicate that they are going to be a special type of method. And that's what these two methods are. So I'll start, I'll first start talking about class methods because we kind of already have touched on it with class variables. So the way that a class method works is that you can actually call it on simply the name of the class. So you can see inside of here, uh, my parameters, I only have one thing and it's called CLS. It's not called self, it's called CLS. And what this means is the name of the class. So if I remove Tim and Jim, so I guess I can just comment that out like that, whatever. Then what I can do is I can say, dog dot and then what do you call it num dogs like this 
and this will actually work. And you can see that I'm not calling it on an instance or like of the dog class or like a object of dog class. I'm just simply calling it on the class. So if I do this, you can see that it gives me zero and that that works, right? Now, again, you can call it on, uh, what do you call it? Like you can call it on an instance. Like if you say Tim equals dog and name Tim, I can still call it on Tim and this is still going to work fine. It's just that you don't need to do that, right? <laughs> you can do it by just calling with the name. Now, static methods are a little bit different. They actually don't need the class to uh, to be called. So it doesn't pass in the class. So that means that you can't reference anything within the class. So the whole point of having this class passed in when you call this method is so that you can use class variables and you can use other methods within with inside the class. So for example, if within num dogs, I wanted to use a static method or I wanted to call an initialization or I wanted to do something that revolved around the dog class, I would need the class name, right? So that's why it's passed through. But with static methods, we only pass whatever parameters we want. So we don't have to have a self, we don't have to have a class, and we don't even have to have any parameters. But in this case, I'm giving one parameter n. So I'm going to show you how this works. So I've completely removed any instances of dog in my program. There's no objects, we're not printing anything, whatever, okay? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to call bark without passing through any object or any class name. And you can see how this works. So what I have to do to do this is it has to know obviously where bark is, right? So it's inside the dog class. So I have to start by typing dog, but then I can type bark like this and give it a number. And you can see here, I just wrote a little comment barks end time. So if I run this, you can see we get bark, 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 bark. Now notice that with inside this bark class, I don't do anything. Like I don't touch any attributes. I don't touch any class methods. And there's actually no way for me to do that. So if I were to try to say, I wanted to get the value of the length of dogs, right? With inside this static method. Well, I would be unable to do that because I don't have self, right? Self is, it's not working. I don't have a class. So how am I gonna be able to call a class um, variable or another class method. I actually can't do that. So the point of static methods is when you're just going to be using them as a function, but you want to organize them within a class. So a really good uh, use of static methods, for example, is say you were created like a class and you called it math. Okay. In here, instead of having like an initialization and all this stuff, you just had a bunch of static methods. Now, why would you, why do you put them in this math class? Why not just create them as functions? Well, the thing is you want to build import modules within Python. You guys have probably seen this before, right? You can import other files that you've created into like main files. So when you create a bunch of um, like math methods or whatever, what you do is you'd say class math, and then you just say like at static method, and then you define and you'd say like add like this. Okay. And you say like X and X two, and then you could return X plus X two. And that way you don't have to create an instance of math. You don't have to say like M equals math, right? You can just say math dot add, give it two values and it will return it to you. And you can do math dot subtract and you can organize all like the functions that you wanted to use within that class. And then class methods, right, are more used for like, if you want to access class variables without having to pass in an object, because it's just going to automatically pass whatever the class name is that you're giving it. I hope that that makes sense. Now these I'll touch on these really quickly in case I didn't really talk about them. These are known as decorators. Um, I know it's kind of a weird name, but pretty much this just denotes the fact that you are creating a class method and you are creating a static method because otherwise it's probably going to get mad at you and tell you that you need to type in self or you need to type in like another parameter or something like that. So by doing this, not only is it a visual representation for anyone that's reading your code, but you're also just um, telling Python that this is going to be a static method. This is going to be a class method. Obviously you can have as many static methods as you want, as many class methods as you want, and they're actually really useful. So anyways, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you guys have any questions about any of this stuff, make sure you leave a comment down below. And in the next video, I'm going to be talking about public and private classes in Python. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.